and we're back for part three at least I hope it's funny because apparently people watching or seeing us both but I kept freezing on Sandra so let's see if Sandra's gonna show up in the first place we, we can finish and see if we can finish our conversation um, there she is well let's give it another go to give up but she's like no hello third time's a charm i hope so okay back Good. to the drawing board yes <laughs> hey so uh, what i want to so i wanted to ask this question and maybe let's see uh, if the universe really doesn't want me to ask that um so how do you know like okay, let me rephrase it differently when you pulled Afri's Earth, was there at some point, were you, at some point, were you afraid that you were just being a perfectionist, or afraid to stand in the limelight? Um, yes. So how do you know the difference? Because I think for a lot of people, that's the balancing act, right? Like, because yes. I heard that a lot with my big project. Like, I have my 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 big massive fantasy project and I've been pestered about it so much it's just put it out like just stop being such a perfectionist and I'm just like I'm just not there yet not in a it's I'm really... not ready to show it it's just the story is not there yet I need something more I need more time with it that's okay. has nothing to do with perfectionism just the story is not ready to be told in its entirety yet so that um that's why I published because I thought apart from the wanting external validation the, the reason I wanted the external validation was because I thought, okay, I'm just being a perfectionist. I just, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I, I felt like I'd gone through it and gone through it and gone through it. And and now I was just treading water. And the reason for that is because I didn't put the bloody thing away and give it space yeah. to just brew in, a, in the back of my computer and then come back to it and do another revision. I just didn't give it the space that it needed. I just churned and churned and churned until it felt like I was just – there was nothing more I could do because at the time there was nothing more I could do because mm -hmm. the space. Yeah. So is that something – because like I said, like I, I just quoted it in, the, in, the, in part two, I quoted Stephen King and he's, you know, put it away in the door for like six weeks and just work on something else. Could that be why – like some of the stuff that I've read in the, in the past – few months yep. um, by people because I've been actually investigating people who do a uh, rapid release so they publish a lot um, and I haven't I haven't investigated them all like I, I really do stick to the genres that I find interesting um, then I and so many times I'm like there's just it, it's just not developed enough yet like there's 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 so much more there's so many layers and of course the funny thing is like if, if a book is really good like I'm a reader, but once I start noticing stuff, I just become the editor. And then I start seeing, okay, so like if, if I was, so then I start looking at it like it is a manuscript that I've been asked to edit. So then I see like, okay, so here's a layer that could be pulled in. This is the, so I, I like, I almost want to start making like comments, you know, in the, in, in the which I'm not going to do. Um, but for me, like, as the writer, reader, and editor, for me, like when I turn on the when the editor turns on, like I don't turn on the that. editor. When the editor's, that's the sign for me that it's been published too fast, or um, I don't know if it's too fast. At least it's not it's it's not been given the respect and the time and the space it deserves. Yeah. And I know that's a, that that opinion will make me yeah. so entirely unpopular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how did you know? So it's choppy again, but I'm going to keep going because I think I got enough. So that is how um, that is how I am absolutely certain that I was right to pull Afri's Earth because all of those things, all of okay, this needs this could be deeper, this could be clearer. There, this is this. There's not enough of showing of the character's internal process here. The ending is completely wrong. You know, this is the first book in a series. It's not a standalone. You need to, you know, all of these things that I now know 
that had I given myself time after the end of that draft rather than publish, um, would have come up naturally knowing that I was going to go back to that manuscript and letting it just sit and knowing that this is part of the process. But this is part of building your process, building my process. I think that you can't know this until you go through it. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, you have to do that. Um, I think you have to, because people can tell you, right? People can tell you, uh, this is how you need to do it. And when you're done with a draft, you put it away. Mm-hmm. But I think for a lot, I think a lot of people uh, at, at the moment think they don't need that. Uh, also because it doesn't match with the whole rapid release thing but I think once you've been through it and you're realizing oh I think then it'll hit you that yeah no like I need to respect that cycle yeah it's it's like anything that you want to practice that you want to well anything that you want to do well requires practice and so if you've been a writer your whole life you might think that you don't need the practice but this is a different beast. This isn't just writing to yourself for the sake of writing something or, you know, a little afternoon's entertainment or, or, or journaling or whatever. Crafting a book is a different beast. Writing for someone to, in, to, to someone else's pleasure, not just your own, is uh, it's, it's an art. I can't just pick up my saxophone now and play the way I used to when I was 15 years old, when I was amazing and could play anything you put in front of me. It's a a struggle now because I haven't practised. I haven't kept up the practice. So even if you're naturally talented, which I am, very musically talented, if I don't practise, it doesn't sound the way I want it to. So you have to keep that up as well. So what do you think? So what do you, in, in terms of um, this, 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 this whole, the, the, the rapid releasing of books, right? Because there's, there's multiple ways of doing it. Like I also know people who just write their trilogies and they just keep them to themselves. And then when they're ready, then they publish them, right? So then they can, that can take up years before yeah. they're ready and then they publish them. But there are also people who just, Publish, write, publish, write, publish, write, publish, write. And my question is, like, and this is something that I am not aware of, but this is something that I'm really curious about. Is there, and this is, oh, this is hypothetical. Do you think at some point you become so skilled that you can tell these stories without having them just sort of sit and just, you know, brew a little bit? Um, um, and might it also I depend think... on the kind of stories you're telling? Yeah, I think it does depend on the kind of stories you're telling. And I think it depends um, if you're writing in the same genre consistently and constantly, then, yeah, I think that it's entirely possible that your skills get better because using the musical metaphor again, when I was at the peak of my practice, when I was playing all the time, you could put a sheet of music in front of me and I could play it with no problem. Yeah. Yeah, so it's also that, yeah. I know how it feels. I knew the beat. I knew the count. I think. Yeah, so, so, so there's something in there as well. Like if you have a long Sorry, career. Time. What did you say? We're breaking up again. Our communication is usually so smooth. Yeah, I don't think she can hear me. Sorry, sweetheart. You just I'm trying to catch what you're saying, but I'm, I think I'm missing big chunks of it. Yeah, I guess so. But but yes, for, so for the I'm just going to speak. I hope I'm not talking over the top of you. For the rapid release. So for the rapid release, I do think you can you you can you do it if you're not worried about publishing um, things that maybe aren't as great or maybe are complete crap, and keep doing that until you get better, and then go back and um, publish the ones that are true crap at the start or pull them and make them free for true fans who want to read how you started your journey. You know, that I think is a brilliant idea because 
like if anybody's like me, I love knowing where people began and I love knowing how they built their process and how they mm -hmm. got to where they are. Yeah, I love I love that idea. Um, but but um, rapid releasing a series like a big series of fantasy, yeah. So fantasy or 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 something that's got a bit of guts behind it or layers that you subtle layers that you're trying to build into your story. I think there is real value in letting those ones sit. I think there for me anyway. I am going to write probably my whole series of five books before I publish because because going back to sh to foreshadow stuff that happens in the last book if i want to put something in the first book that's happens in the last that you know that is coming up in the last book i don't know about that till i draft the last book and so if i want to have all of the layers that, of magic in that in the whole story that i know need to be there that i need the full body of work in front of me and i need to treat it as a full body of work not separate books yeah, that's the same how I'm treating my own trilogy, that uh, I want to at least have the uh, a few. I want to be a few drafts into the third book uh, before even thinking about publishing the first. Um, yeah, am I still here? Yeah, and it, you know, it's an exercise in patience for me. Yeah, because this is a series of five books, and that. That in itself is valuable. Like this whole career that I've chosen is really one of um, deep, deep healing, getting to know myself, and and learning how to be vulnerable and learning what that truly looks and feels like, because it doesn't look and feel like people think it looks and feels. Like. No. No. No, and that's the thing for me. I think what what there's so there's so little patience, um, especially in the indie world, because people now understand that if I publish enough books, I can do this. Like I can be the full time author that I always wanted to be. It's no longer there are no gatekeepers telling me um, what I can and cannot write. Uh, if I find my own audience, I'll be fine. So there's this hurriedness about self-publishing um, and I, I totally I totally get that but I think from from the moment I realized that indie publishing was a thing like I was always the advocate going like okay but look at your look at your goals like look at your own goals and I, I've been um, so this summer I went to the 20 books to 50k uh, conference in Edinburgh and and I mean like if you're part of the of the of the Facebook group, like these people are on fire. Like like I'm they they constantly they, amazed. They are they I mean they go and they publish so fast. Um which kinda worries me because I, for me, like if that's the only representation of what indie publishing looks like, everybody who is not, you know, not able to do that feels that they're failing. Um mm. So I was a little worried about how that would feel like, like how, how the conference would be, like would it all be like that? And then I think it was, um, was I don't know when it was, but somewhere, because it, it was it was all like it was a writing retreat and then there was the conference and there was writing retreat. So it's all like when what was said and what happened, don't ask me. Um, but at one point Greg Martell said, um, said something about, you know, it doesn't really matter how fast you're taking the steps or how slow you're taking the steps as long you as long as you are taking the steps. Exactly right. It's about what your yeah. personal goals are. Yeah. Um, why are you doing this in the first place? Yeah. And are you doing it every day? Yes, and if you have the privilege to turn writing into a full time job before you get to the point where you can be financially, you know? that I have it financially as your full-time job, that is a privilege. But there are so many people out there who are juggling families, jobs, kids, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. you know, exactly. caretaker. Um, so it is a, it I, is an, an, a, you know. I really okay. feel that privilege. And I've recently um, built into my daily process um, sort of giving thanks or just being grateful to my partner and <clears throat> like just a little word of goodbye rather than you know goodbye have a good day um, <clears throat> in 
in my own words, just honouring you. Today I'm going to write to honour you. Simple That's but lovely. true. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I get, to, I get to do this. I get to do this as my job every day. So how was that? Because so when you when you pulled that book, n- knowing that because of your partner you have the privilege to do this, how how was that? Like was it? Oh how, God! When this it, is when this. it when it when did, when did you yeah? Because that because I would assume that you tell her when you pulled it. No. And now I'm wonder yeah. So now oh, now I want to hear now I want to no. hear this story. Now I want to hear how she was wondering. Yeah. Uh, with confusion and disappointment and a little bit of uh, hurt mm-hmm. and because um, I had been so secretive about the whole thing because I was ashamed because if it's not out there, there's no possibility of it earning any money. So I have no mm-hmm. chance of contributing to our financial, um, you know, income. Mm-hmm. And that that for so many years has been the measuring stick of is what you what you do worthy. Twenty, you know, so many years, and so I am having to unlearn that. So this has been a really slow untangling and unlearning of of. Um, creative creative work is not worthy because it's not bringing in enough money, or or or, and and you know I feel like I need to generate that income mm-hmm. to to be allowed to do this thing that I do, and and learning how to feel safe inside our home, knowing that. I'm allowed to do this. This is like not just allowed. I know that so it sounds, it's not exactly the way I want it to sound, but I get to do this. And so I need mm-hmm. to honor yeah, no, the space yeah. that I am being being held in um, and not just piss it up the wall, you know? Mm-hmm. But also yeah, it's, a, it's a trust. It's about that. No, no, I can, I can imagine because I could... Uh, and like I've been, I've been a partner who, uh, um, when I when I uh, decided that I uh, wanted to separate, became really angry because there was a lot of resentment about the fact that I was always writing instead of you know doing fun things, and now they were not going to benefit from that when I was ready to publish them, and then there was the assumption that I would become like the next J.K. Rowling or something, which I mean, I mean. Like money wise, I wouldn't mind that at all. Um, but but there, there was a lot of resentment. Like I put up with you and your your like hermit behavior for so long, and and where is my benefit now? So there's also that kind of trust that the other needs to have that what you're doing in your own time. Like for me, it was and I know for you as well. Like upstairs in the attic, um, yeah. that you're do you're doing everything you can. Yes. To create and something so, sustainable. And so, and so I'm reminding myself of that. That I'm not that that I am not held accountable, but I am holding myself accountable. That if mm-hmm. I choose to be in this space, I'm gonna be in this damn space. I'm gonna take up the whole space and um and and write. So that's also about not being because I've always felt really apologetic about writing. But I'm so sorry that this is a thing I do. Um, and I, I, I do see that if, if you become unapologetic about it, that will also bring you to that level that you can actually put out something that is worthwhile. I'm thinking I'm, I'm, you're losing me again. Yeah, I'm losing big chunks. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Look, I don't mind it's coming okay. on for another hut. If you want to have another heart to heart some other time, we can just talk about whatever you want to talk about. That's fine, sweetie. I'm sorry. Yes, and I have I, I have been pondering I've been pondering whether to do these via Zoom. So maybe we can just record it 
yeah. again. It's much more it's much more reliable by Zoom and then then we can I don't know. I just like I just like the uncut live. We thing. can still do uncut. Like, yeah. Yeah, but I mean I cannot cut so that I'm uh, I, I don't have those. I just kind of skills. That's okay. Okay. So I'm gonna put all of these together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put all of these together. I want to thank you so much for sharing this with us. Uh, this might have been the most honest conversation I've had thus far. This is exactly well, you what, know what You know what our conversations are like. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So thank you for this. <laughs> it's a pleasure. And uh, let's talk again when the internet is working in our favor. Okay. It's friendly. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.